Hi, I'm Ben, I like Kill Team, and I want to talk about it. All right, folks, welcome to part three of my How to Build a Kill Team series. In this video, we're going to be looking at equipment, how to use it, how I think you should be using it. Again, I can't show you the best way, I can only give you my way, and this is not any specific recommendation, I'm just gonna show you how I think about it. And uh, it, you know, we're using my Chaos Space Marine Kill Team here for this whole series, but the principles can be applied to any kill team, any faction. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get into it, I guess. Every variety of kill team, whether it is compendium team, box team, white dwarf team, they all have specialists that are baked in to those kill teams, right? For example, like a leader. Every kill team has a leader. And that leader is probably going to have a better ballistic skill or better melee. They're definitely going to have one extra wound, right? And so this is a specialist. You might also have a gunner, a heavy gunner, a fighter, an icon bearer, a comms, right? Whatever it may be, those are all specialist data cards that are kind of baked in. When you take it, you're taking, you know, they might have extra war gear, right? But that is a specialist that you can take. And I like to think that every model on my team has a specific job to do, right? A specific role, you know? And these specialists are the scary ones, right? Like for example, your plasma gunner, there's a reason why he has a target on his back because he is scary, right? Everybody wants to take out your plasma gunner first and with good reason. And he has a job to do. His job is not to charge into melee, right? Because he has uh, worse melee than anybody else on my team, actually, I think on this Chaos Space Marine team. Uh, his job is to sit back and be a threat from turn one, if at all possible, uh, to maybe sit on a point and still be able to be a threat, right? To lock down a firing lane, to, to make custodies and you know guards have been alike shake in their boots. That's what he's supposed to do. My aspiring champion, on the other hand, his job is to be leading the charge, right? He's got five attacks on a power fist. He's got a plasma pistol. His job is to be up in people's faces, ruining somebody's day, right? And as soon as possible, as soon as I can get him to in, into combat, into shooting range with the pistol, that's what I want him to do. Everybody has a job to do. And along with those specialists, you will also have what I frequently call uh, loser dudes or little doofuses or whatever just comes out at the moment. Uh, and these are going to be your guardsman trooper with a las gun uh, and a bayonet and nothing else. Uh, your neophyte uh, gene stealer cult neophyte with uh, an auto gun and a gun butt, uh, which I think is the funniest thing. They could have chosen anything. It could have gun stock, right? Whatever, like the gun butt. That's hilarious. Um, and then, or, or you, even for space marines, right? You're just vanilla bolter space marine with bolters and fists and nothing else, right? These are your warriors, your troopers. And I don't like them as much because they are not as specialized, right? Actually, they're not specialized. They're just vanilla. You get what you get. You don't take them because you want to. You take them because you have to take them to fill out your roster because you're limited to a certain amount of uh, specialists in your kill team. And what I want to take a look at is that equipment can take those loser dudes, those little idiots, and turn them into kind of like a pseudo budget specialist. As tempting as it is, uh, nine times out of 10, I don't think you should be stacking multiple uh, equipment options onto a model that is already good, right? Like your aspiring champion already has five attacks. As tempting as it is to give him six, he doesn't need six attacks. With the power fist hitting on three, he does not need six attacks. But you know who does need some extra help is your little loser dudes. My favorite example of this is my all Scions uh, kill team, which for the record is still my favorite compendium team. Uh, I love my Scions. Uh, but for two equipment points, you can take a loser regular trooper, Scion trooper, and turn him into a medic. You give him a med kit for two points, and boom, you just added uh, a specialist to your kill team like nothing, right? You already had four gunners, you had a leader, you had a comms. Well, guess what? For two equipment points, now one of your troopers is now a medic. And that's awesome. And he can heal people 2d3 wounds right per turn. That's super cool. So uh, that, that's an example of taking a loser with no job in particular and giving him a very important job, a special job, a, dare I say, specialist role in your kill team. Or check this out. Let's say you have a chaos cultist on your uh, kill team. You have one of those a chaos cultist fire team. Uh, let's say for three equipment points, you give him a crack grenade, which is the scary grenade. Then when you're setting up, you pay one CP to, uh, for the ploy that allows you to set up one cultist anywhere on the board within one inch of heavy terrain uh, and further than six inches or at least six inches away from an enemy or the enemy drop zone with a conceal order, okay? Uh, and then so you're going in turn one with this guy on a conceal order, but 
Let's say you take uh, Infiltration in the Scouting phase, which allows you to change one model's order when you activate them in the first turning point. Now you have this guy who's concealed behind heavy cover. Uh, he's got a crack grenade, and you can just, whenever you activate him, boom, now he has the engage order, right? So you just created, you invented uh, a specialist that was never even an option to take. Now you have a Chaos Cultist Grenadier Assassin model. You just added that and invented it, uh, you know, out of the blue. And so, you know, do you want to do that? Would you want to take a, who cares? That's just cool to think about. So that's the kind of thing that I want to be talking about in this uh, how to use equipment is how can I elevate my little losers, right, uh, to be effective? How can I bring them up so they're, they actually have a job to do, right? And so you just, you know, with that stack, you just turned a loser into a loser with a scary grenade. And pff, that's worth three equipment points in my mind. Now, let's take a look at some cool equipment options for my specific uh, Chaos uh, Space Marine kill team. Um, and let's start off with my leader, my aspiring champion. Dark Blessing, Grizzly Trophy, and Sacrificial Dagger are three really cool options. So let's take a look at those and see which one you might want to take uh, over the others. Dark Blessing for three equipment points uh, bumps you up one attack. It gives you an extra attack which frankly your aspiring champion does not need. He has five attacks, hitting on twos with a power weapon, threes with a power fist. Nothing needs six attacks in this game. So I, as, as tempting and as super cool as it is, as somebody who has run it, um, I just, not necessary. I would look elsewhere. Grizzly Trophy, on the other hand, is amazing. It is an offensive and defensive boost at the same time uh, because your take subtracting within a three inch bubble. So whether somebody is shooting you within three inches or they're you know attacking you in melee, they have to subtract one from their attack characteristic. Attack characteristic. Uh, and so not only does that mean that they're hitting you less, it means that they're also blocking less. And so you imagine if you if you are fighting somebody with three attacks, that they only have two attacks. That's whew, that's brutal. If somebody you know, it, so it takes a good melee profile and takes it to a bad melee profile takes a bad melee profile and makes it even worse. So it's a great option for three equipment points, but I think the best option, if you're gonna, gonna, you know, if you're trying to spread points out all over your team, I think Sacrificial Dagger is probably, you know, the best bang for your buck. Sacrificial Dagger is also three points, and what it allows you to do is up to once per turning point, so up to four times in a game, although you probably won't be able to, to, to use it four times. If you kill somebody in melee, you can just boop, drink a healing potion and go up four wounds. You're not rolling for anything, you can just regain up to four wounds once per turning point when you kill somebody in melee. So let's say you use this one time, right? He has 13 wounds. If you get a kill and you know take those uh, four wounds back, now you basically have a 17 wound model. Let's say you are able to do it twice. Let's say you kill two people, you know, one in the first turn, one in the second turn, uh, then that's another four, what was that? Like 21 wounds on a model basically? So Sacrificial Dagger is amazing. He's gonna be in combat, right? If your aspiring champion is not in combat, you're having a real bad time anyways. So I would take it uh, and then just try to get him in combat as, as quick as possible. And so, you know, if you're fighting guardsmen and they, let's say they, they do maybe two, five damage on you, whatever it is, if they get two hits, you know, you regain almost all full health. So this one is amazing. It keeps him on the board uh, a really long time, longer than he should be, and so I love it. Sacrificial Dagger is my personal wreck for an aspiring champion if you're going to give him uh, some, some equipment uh, points. Next up is our Plasma Gunner. He's already so good, he doesn't need anything. He's perfect just the way that the False Emperor created him. Then we have our Heavy Gunner. Now, whether you give this guy a missile launcher or a heavy bolter, if you have him on your list, you should be giving him suspensor system for three points. What this allows him to do is he can move up to six inches in an activation. So that could be a full six inch move. That could also be a three inch move and a three inch dash, right? So it's up to six inches. So if you're running a heavy gunner, which I don't think you have to, but I always would, I just my preference, um, and missile launcher is better than heavy bolter. If you disagree, at me in the comments and we can fight about it. I'm not, I don't really wanna fight, but just if you disagree, let me know. Um, I, I just don't think the heavy bolter is, is the way to go because I'd rather, have, I'd rather kill something in one shot and also have the multiple profile, so I have the missile launcher. That's just my two cents on that, but definitely give your heavy gunner a suspensor system. 
If you do insist on taking a heavy bolter, which I know a lot of you do, I know I'm the bad guy for insisting anything other than a bolter of some variety. Uh, I know everybody loves malicious volleys or heavy, you know, bolter discipline, whatever it's called. If you're gonna take the heavy bolter, with this kill team, you should, uh, for I think it's two or three equipment points, give it malefic, malefic rounds, I don't know how to say it, I don't care. Uh, because that would give you, they'll bump you up from piercing one on a crit, so that would give you AP when you roll a crit, it bumps you up to AP one standard all the time. Here's why I wouldn't do that, because that's the only reason you would take a heavy bolter with this team, in my opinion, because now you're gonna have to give them three points for the suspensor system, and then now two or three points for this malefic round, which bumps them up to, uh, to you know, AP one. So that's six equipment points on one guy. I don't like that. I don't think you should be doing that. I know I'm the bad guy. That's just my opinion. Missile launcher, always. Now let's look at our two warriors, which one has a bolter, one has a bolt pistol, and also I'm gonna include my icon bearer in here because he has a bolter too, so this would also apply to him. You have belt feed, which is uh, two equipment points on bolters and bolt pistols. That uh, gives you the ceaseless rule, so that means you're re-rolling once on your bolt weapons. For two points, that's good. Uh, you also have malefic rounds, uh, which would bump you to piercing one on a bolter or bolt pistol. Again, two equipment points, that's really good. Uh, or then you also have the option of, of crack or frag grenades. In this list, I can only afford frags, so I'm only going frags over here. And so let me, let me explain when you would take each of those, right? If you are up against elite teams, you're taking uh, malefic rounds, for sure, because it gives you piercing, uh, which was AP, gives you AP one when you roll a crit, which is super good. If you are against, let's say, let's say chaos demons, right? Everybody has an invuln, so AP doesn't matter. You're gonna take a uh, belt feed, which lets you reroll once, gives you the ceaseless rule, so that you're getting more consistent hits because AP doesn't matter when you're fighting people with, uh, with an invuln, a four or five of invuln, whatever they have. Right? Or let's say you're fighting mm, Tyranid Gene Stealers. You're gonna take those grenades, uh, which will help you uh, you know, get models who are concealed and all that kind of stuff. So just a little bit of ways to think about how, how and when you can equip them, because that changes the whole flavor of your kill team, right? You went from having little losers who have no special rules to now little losers who are specialized and tailored to the opponent you're fighting which is what's cool about equipment points because equipment is not baked into your team or your roster, right? You can change it out depending on the round, depending on who you're fighting, so it's very flexible and it can change the entire flavor of your kill team uh, depending on what you fight, which is how I think we should be using our equipment points to take our little losers who suck and elevate them and give them a role, a job to play so that they're just not shooting regular bolters when they could be shooting, right? You know, instead of having a uh, heavy bolter where you, let's say, you could theoretically stack uh, malefic rounds, uh, belt feed, and suspensor system for like eight or nine points, which would mean he's rerolling ones, he's AP one, and he can move, he's, he's mobile, right? Or you could have a whole kill team who is specialized and tailored to the list that you're fighting, uh, which I think is absolutely the way to go. Now, let me give you an example of a equipment loadout that I would run uh, for Chaos Space Marines. Your leader, your aspiring champion, he's gonna get a Sacrificial Dagger for three equipment points. Your heavy gunner is gonna get Suspensor System for three equipment points. And then in my list, I have one warrior with a bolter and one uh, icon bearer with a bolter. Both of them are going to either get Malefic Rounds, uh, Belt Feed, or Frag Grenades. And my chainsword bolt pistol guy is not getting anything because I just I don't have the points and he's gonna be in melee anyways. If you wanted to spend three equipment points and cut from somewhere else, you could bump his four attacks up to five. Just don't think it's worth it. I, you know, he, he's supposed to be in melee. Four attacks will hurt most things. I don't think five is particularly worth it on him in this particular list. And in my opinion, that's a really nice sweet spot. That's a good take all comers list, right? Because you have the, the points to give two of your guys multiple different things that would tailor them to, like I said, different different lists, fighting different opponents. Uh, and so, I think I said, I think it's a sweet spot. I w if I didn't want to think about what I'm taking, like this is my default list, right? Uh, one of those options for my warriors and everything else, that's my default list. It's worked really well for me. I like it, uh, I'm, I'm still experimenting, but you know, from a couple months of, of testing it out, that's what I've landed on as my default 
favorite equipment loadout for them. Uh, also, but my, my chainsword bolt pistol guy, I sometimes just run a bolter guy with him um, because you know he has four attacks with his fists doing three, four, which is honestly decent. So I, I swap him out depending on the list. And I end up having one guy uh, who doesn't have any points on him but that's why I like the chainsword because the chainsword is is pretty good. It was like four or five damage, uh, four attacks. So that's pretty good. So he typically doesn't get anything. He's the loser that we don't talk about. We don't like him very much. Now here's an equipment list that I run strictly for fun, right? If I'm just goofing around, if we're taking like, oh, let's try this. Let's, you know, if we're doing something weird, I'll give my aspiring champion a uh, grizzly trophy, which means that he's subtracting one attack from anybody who's attacking him within three inches, whether it's melee or, or shooting. Uh, I'm giving him Dark Blessing, which buffs him up to six attacks with a Power Fist. And I'm also giving him Sacrificial Dagger, healing himself four wounds whenever he kills you once per turn. That's, he, here's the difference. He's a melee monster. He's gonna get sniped turn one. And then all nine of your equipment points are wasted. And so what I like about spreading your equipment points out everywhere else elevating the whole team is that now let's say your leader gets taken out because he will die he is a melee model there is an expiration date on melee models and it's probably turn two but maybe turn three on this guy because he has a sacrificial dagger uh and so what happens is if he gets if when when he's killed you don't lose nine points of equipment you lose three points and you still have you know what is it seven points left on the board eight points whatever it might be uh to still be helping you out and so that's just i think it's very pretty clear right? i'm not this is not rocket science it's pretty clear that a list that kind of spreads equipment out gives everybody a job a specialist pseudo specialist role to play is absolutely the way that i think that we should be thinking about equipment uh and uh and so that's the way i've been doing it and it's been working really well for me all right, this is how I have been thinking about and running my equipment loadouts for all of my different teams. Uh, if you disagree, let me know in the comments. And while you're down there disagreeing, also tell me, or not disagreeing, just if you want to comment, it'd be cool. Uh, I'd like to know what team are you running and enjoying in this edition of Kill Team? Uh, and also, how are you equipping them with equipment? What, what, you know, what are you liking? What are you finding works? Uh, please tell me because there are, you know, I, I'm about to dip my toe into a lot of Xenos factions just for you guys. I'm giving the Imperium a break uh, because, you know, the Imperium sucks. Uh, I'm an Imperium boy at heart. Uh, I probably have Drakari coming up next. Maybe some Kroot after that. There's a couple of Kroot boys in the comments, that, and uh, I want to show the Kroot some love because they're actually pretty fun, this edition. Uh, maybe some Gene Stealer Colts, and we'll see. Uh, I also have, I'm working on my veteran uh, guard kill team. And, uh, and I'm doing a cool conversion that I'm really happy with. And also I'm building another Scion team just of a different flavor because I can't, literally I cannot help myself. Uh, so anyways, that's gonna do it for this video guys. Thank you so much for liking and commenting and subscribing and being so nice and cool uh, over the internet. I have been Ben, thank you again for watching and uh, I'll see you around.